Now that was a short break, wasn't it? Um, once again, I'm, I'm, that was the that was the coolest sound demo I've ever gotten from 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 a tablet. Uh, if you guys have the chance, um, yes, Lenovo is a sponsor actually of um, of the of, of 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 our block lounge. Um, but trust me, when you listen to it, you know that they don't have to pay me for the, for saying this. That was out of control. Seriously, the three D sound, the three sixty sound, was absolutely amazing. Guys, this is going to be our last slot um, before our little lunch break, and I'm going to talk to uh, Hans Jung Werner. He's the director for consumer GTM in EMEA. Yeah, Hans, well, welcome. Thank you. First, Hello. oh, oh microphone. Hey, oh, no, no I, should, worries, I, should, I should use my microphone. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, that yeah, helps. Yeah, yeah. That helps. Yeah, we helps. also have sound <laughs> on these streams. <laughs> um, but just. Just tell us a little bit what you're doing at Intel, so that people can get, in, get an idea oh, of, yeah, of your position. I would be happy if I know what I'm doing, you know. <laughs> um, you know, what I'm doing, I mean, the GTM is go-to-market. Um, yeah. So that's uh, one of the nice uh, three-letter acronyms we have. We have many of these. Um, what I'm doing, I mean, we're trying to uh, get consumer programs uh, out into the market. So that means basically everything that uh, ends up in retail, and that needs to get promoted in retail. So if it is... Uh, uh, standees, risers, what have you, things which are bringing out the products because, I mean, we have a challenge as Intel, right? I mean, Intel is, uh, you cannot taste us, you cannot smell us, you cannot touch us. Yeah. We are invisible. So somehow we need to get ourselves out and seen in the market and that's what we're trying to do through all the consumer channels. Consumer channels are really e-tailers, retailers, as we do that together with our OEMs, we do that online, we do that offline, we do that through training um, and that's, that's basically, we want to help consumers to make a choice. Because that is one of the most difficult things for consumers, is to choose. They stand in front of a shelf and sometimes they have 50 different systems in front of them. How do you select? Yeah. How do you find the right one for you? And what do you do if you don't know what to do? Usually is you limit your risk. What means li risk limitation in this case? Mm. You spend not a lot of money. You buy a cheap system, you may not be happy when you're home, and that is something we want to avoid. Mm -hmm. So, um, how, how are you going to do that? How are you going to tell me which product I want? <laughs> or or, 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 is, or is, is, is this more of a company secret, right? Is this your secret no, sauce inside yeah, of Intel, uh, right? Of course, it's secret. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, we have different tools, right? So we have, on one hand, we train um, about 20,000 uh, salespeople in the stores. So we have a database of 35,000 and they 20,000 are active. So they, they basically taking 1 million trainings a year. So on all kinds of technologies and products and positionings. Then we have a software which runs on the screen in a store. Mm. So you basically you can select with three, five questions. You basically get a recommendation. And then based on that recommendation, you can maybe find and narrow down your choice. And then, of course, with that, we, we do the same thing online. Um, so and then uh, we, we really try to, get to, to help in, in the most efficient way through questions that people ask themselves, what do I need the system for? What do I want to do with that? And many people think about today and they don't think about tomorrow. And that's what we try to build in as well. Because you want to use, I mean, people use their systems now in average six years, mm -hmm. a very long time. Right? Yeah. If I would go back 10 years, 15 years, people used it maybe three years. Mm -hmm. Now they use it six years, which is positive for the product because it means the product survives that time. It's Absolutely. a quality. Yeah. But then you need to know uh, you need to, when you purchase, you need to build in kind of an investment protection for yourself. Yeah. You, you, no, nobody is thinking that way. Investment protection sounds so business, right? But th that is something you want to use it for that time. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to help them with. And that is a pretty complex task. And if you then think of, I mean, you have a Lenovo, you have an Acer, you have an Asus, you have a Dell, Toshiba, whomever. Yeah. And they all have, of course, their own ideas and agendas. And we try to bring these things together. And then have a joint go-to market. That's what we say, basically. Yeah, that's how we call that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a complex task, I can tell you. And we, we do that for 46 countries. So wow. that is uh, a lot of to do. That, mu that must be quite complex, like you, like you said, right? especially when you're doing this for so many different countries yeah. with this 
very regional and very unique mentalities and characters and yeah i mean you can imagine right i mean if you do something in, in saudi arabia that is very different to what you do most probably in germany let's say yeah right so you have to yeah, of course you have to respect the local cultures local religions i mean local cultures everything every habits you have to, to build that in when you do marketing materials for africa it doesn't make sense to have the nice american there right it yeah. should be a picture of somebody from africa otherwise it's not resonating so these are little things but you have to learn that over time and then take into account as well the product complexity now we don't have any more only a desktop and a notebook right we have two in ones we have tablets we have big screens small screen super slim gaming systems you have everything right yeah so yeah hmm, what how to, to play with that one um, but on the other hand if that would be easy they wouldn't need us so yeah. that's yeah. fine so at least we have a job so Hans, it also means that you have to try out all these products, right? Um, I don't have to try out all the products, but at least I should have an idea of what products in market are coming to market. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or well, at least um, you can kind of get the, I wouldn't say like the flagship device, but at least you know what the different the different categories and you need yeah. to figure out, you know, what are the real differentiations in between the categories? Uh, how can we target specific consumers yeah. and customers with specific products? Uh, what's the overall strategy for a category and mm -hmm. all of this? So this is this is where you guys are starting. Yeah, that's where you guys are. That's true. And then you have as well. I mean, take a simple example. I mean, uh, when you, when what people do, and as well what we do, do together with our customers, we have promoters in stores sometimes, right? And that, that costs money. Uh, mm. And you have to ask yourself, okay, what product do I accompany with a promoter? Is it a normal laptop, 15.6-inch mm. screen laptop, which most of people buy still, so which is a, a kind of a volume product? Or is it maybe the gaming PC, or is it maybe the 2-in-1, which is not as well known? I mean, we all talk here nicely, 2-in-1, 2-in-1, 2-in-1. The world outside does not know. If I go to the streets here in Berlin, for example, I would yeah. ask people, hey, tell me about a two-in-one. They would most probably tell me something about a bed that can convert to a sofa. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, nothing to do with IT. And uh, that is something we have to work on. And then here you would use a promoter because that's something that, that, that needs to be explained. And that, that is the point, basically. Yeah, two and one, that's a good one. Pay two, get one. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, two shirts, yeah, that, one. That, that, that would be quite an interesting survey to do. Uh, just, um, to we, see. we do those kind of, kind of surveys, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> we learn a lot. Um, how complicated was it? Especially, like you said, um, like for almost 25 years, We've, when we were talking about a laptop or a notebook, mm -hmm. we've had this classic uh, clamshell design. And we just had uh, uh, one representative from Toshiba over here that, who invented it like 30 years ago in 1985. Oh. Mm -hmm. and, um, and now you have the two-in-one. Now you have the tablets. You have the detachable ones. Mm -hmm. um, you have all-in-ones that almost look like a huge tablet. You have portable so all-in-ones. You have, you have portable all-in-ones, right? Yeah. Um, how how complex is it to actually figure out the usage scenario for uh, uh, for a customer? Are you are, are you doing oh. like field tests, like getting five hundred mm -hmm. customers uh, trying out different devices, and you basically just observing them? What are they doing with those devices? What are their user scenarios? What are, what are their preferences here? Uh, you you bet we do that. Um, uh, let me give you an example. We did. Uh, um, Two years ago, if I'm not wrong, two years ago roughly, we did about 500,000 interviews around the globe to find out what are the key pain points for people. What do they wish? What do they like to do? And we came up with certain, um, we call them user, user experiences. Um, and you can see that now shaping out into product. It takes time. Mm. Um, and one of the big topics, just as an example, is no wires. I mean, we, we 2003, we introduced Centrino wireless technology, right? right? So, and, and Centrino technology. And... Uh, Thank you for that, by the way. Yeah, that Seriously, was <laughs> I can't even imagine. My, my, my yeah. first wireless, that was a PCMCIA card. Yeah, right? of course, and I, I just, remember that. Oh my God, and could you imagine that, 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 you know, you would sit in a Starbucks and everyone has an ethernet cable? <laughs> <laughs> I just, yeah, I mean, that's it, cha just, it I, changed everything. I mean, I can tell you, I, I, I mean, uh, people forget that, right? That, yeah. that is an interesting one, people forget uh, that new technologies came in over time. Yeah. And that was with uh, Intel Centrino technology, it was, uh, it was very interesting because as we started with that one, 2003, people said, oh, you know, we don't need that, and there's no hotspot, and there's no infrastructure, and blah, 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 blah. A year later, 
A year later, I had first of my friends, a couple of friends, you know, saying, you know what, I, I'm checking in only in a hotel where I have wireless NAN now. Oh, yeah, exactly. suddenly. And today, you don't ask it, right? Today, you only see it when it's not there. Then you say, what? No wireless NAN? How could that be? Today, you complain about hotels having a slow Wi-Fi or maybe even charging you for the Wi-Fi. Here wi -Fi. we go. Exactly. So, basically, the, the, the level, it goes up and up and up and up. The same thing happens. I mean, touch is the same thing. Yeah. And, uh, but... No wires, now you can play that further. No wires. You want to dis yeah, you display on the TV and you, wanna, you do not want to think about it, how to get it there, exactly. right? You just want to connect it. Yeah. So wireless display is something we developed then to do yeah. that. So um, the next thing is no charging. I mean, today, the biggest pain to me is I have a small notebook, very nice, yeah. right? One yeah. kilogram notebook, oh, perfect, great. Yeah. My power supply is most probably 300 grams. <laughs> yeah. And then I have another cable for my mobile phone, I have the next cable for my camera and da 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 da. I want to get these things charged wirelessly. That is something we have built in into the sixth gen generation. And hopefully, second half next year, end of next year, we'll have as well the standard ready to a level that you can put your notebook on a table at Starbucks, hopefully, yeah. and it gets charged yeah. automatically. And I bet with you, that is the next big thing. And at least that's what people told us in that big survey we did. So mm -hmm. no wires is something people want to have because it's a pain to them. Absolutely. You know, you're on vacation. Oh, shoot, I don't have my right cable with me. Uh, bad yeah. luck, you know, and uh, that is something we work on. And then uh, there are other elements. I mean, intuitive, for example, intuitive uh, interfaces. So speech, gesture, that's why we have RealSense here. So RealSense cameras with 3D depths. I mean, the simplest thing now with Windows 10, you log in with your face. Yeah. Yeah. And you do that in a secure way because if you use a 2D camera, there's always a risk. Mm. With a 3D camera, as we have, it is even seeing the pulse he pulsing here. You know, even if you would put a dead body in front of it, it most probably would not let you in. So it's not, nothing is pulsing here, right? So look at the so, <laughs> so, but that that is basically what we what we um, trying to do. So we're trying to to uh, convert wishes and, and and fulfill wishes with that with technology. That that is the essence of this company. And then now you you ask me how is it on communication? Mm. Yeah, we're doing tests uh, with real sense as a technology in stores. So we're doing that since December last year. We're doing that in all media markets in, uh, in Netherlands currently. And we now has, uh, have as well another couple of stores across EMEA. But uh, I can tell you, we had to rewrite our promoter scripts, I don't know how many times, to really get across what can you do with RealSense. And uh, gesture control. People now standing in front of, uh, of, of a, a little, little standy, right? An end cap, that's called. And then playing around, oh, I can do a little Lego game, or I can do um, uh, things like uh, per, uh, Personify, which basically allows yeah. you that to, is a to, really to nice get software. a dog or whatever, yeah. and then you talk as a dog or what have you. Yeah. That's all good fun. But people then, then have to understand, OK, what is possible with that? Yeah? And then with the next revision now of that camera, which then is a front-facing, so uh, uh, rear-facing, so not front-facing. Yeah. Front-facing is what we have today. Rear-facing, so basically you take a picture. You now imagine you take a picture of your room, your living room at home. Yes. Bong, and it gives you the measures automatically. So it tells you, okay, this is 3 meter 20. That is a height of 240. Then you go to IKEA, and you go with that picture in there, and then automatically puts the sofa in yeah. your room, and you can move it back and forth. That is something, again, I think that will help people. It gives you a new experience. And that's why we call it user experience. Right. And these are the things people are asking us to do. And uh, then you translate it in technology, or you resolve it with technology, and then you try to explain to them what they wanted to before. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, this is what is also a process that, that goes on for years and years, right? Yeah. Before you're defining new categories. Right? Just yeah, it goes on years for years. I mean, and uh, it's really funny because you're talking about years and years. I mean, I'm, I'm coming with my background is technology. So mm -hmm. I started in this company uh, in the technology field, then moved into PR and marketing over time, and then back in sales and that. So uh, anyhow, in that, in that time, I mean, we always had this challenge of we're developing many technologies. I mean, we developed USB, we developed Wi-Fi, we developed, uh, co-developed with Xerox, for example, Ethernet. Yeah, yeah. And uh, as a company, you get never seen for that. You ne never get really recognized for that. And um, so what we then, for example, learned as well over time is we enable a lot of things with our technology, things like people now browsing on the internet, people now talking to each other. It's not that we have the software on top, but the back end, all that stuff you do not see. Mm. It's basically running on our stuff, mainly. So, and uh, 
we then uh, ask ourselves, I mean, how can we, can we get uh, seen in that one? What can we do as a, as a brand? And uh, many years ago, for example, so about 10 years plus, I would say, ago we, s we, we learned Intel's relevance is not really there. People may see our sticker on the system, yeah. but they, they assume it's always in there. So it's, mm -hmm. I call it, uh, from a marketing term, I would call it a tempo problem. You know, I ask you, give me a tempo. You give me a softy tissue, right? Yeah, yeah. But tempo is a brand, which right. is not very nice because right. tempo does not get any recognition yeah. for. The people use whatever they want. And we are in danger, we were in danger to get into that space. That's, for example, why we as well started engagements with gamers as the kind of the, the I would call it, gaming is the formula one for, for IT, right? And we, we learned that, uh, I would say, 15 years ago, not 13 years ago, roughly. And then we asked ourselves, okay, what can we do to get relevant in that one? And then we started with really small events where we, where we played around. I mean, first we went to land parties, which was a disaster. I have to say, <laughs> a pure, uh, marketing, you can do lots of disasters, I can tell you. <laughs> and it was a pure disaster. So, because it was closed group, and then and people did uh, all kinds of strange things there, and it was dusty, dirty, and da da da. So it was not really for public. And then we learned, okay, maybe we have to bring gaming and eSport in particular to a broader audience and associate that with Intel because then you can say, okay, I am the technology sponsor of Formula One in IT. That was the, the fundamental idea. But I tell you, the, the beginning was as well funny. The first <laughs> event we had was a Beamer with 20 people in a dark room. I mean, was, ooh, you know, we called that Intel Friday night game. <laughs> yeah, and then, but we over, over one and a half years, we got 800 people in the room every weekend. Mm. Yeah, 800 people in the room in Hamburg, in Munich, in, uh, in, in Italy, in Russia, in uh, Nordics. And then as the next step, so this Inter Friday Night Games we did together with the ESL, um, uh, which is a, was a great partner always. So credit to these folks. <laughs> <laughs> Still there. Uh, because we then built the worldwide tour, the Intel Extreme Masters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we managed that one from here first, the first three years, I guess, we, we did that here with a very small team, so Holly was part of that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so and now it's a worldwide tour and it's one of the biggest worldwide tournaments and uh, I have to tell you that is something where you can bring technology and emotion and passion together. Mm. I would only, if you, if you have never been to a, such a gaming event now, the Intel Extreme Masters, the final in Katowice, I guess, it was uh, the last one, they had 40,000 people in the stadium. Yeah, it's I saw unbelievable. that. that it's unbelievable. That is unbelievable. And I don't know how many people watched it live, right? And oh, they, they, they had, I don't know how many Twitch feeds they had. Oh, God, there was a uh, peak, I'm not sure, millions. Yeah, one millions. million. Yeah. Holy. Yeah. That so, is insane. So, and that is, basic, and that is basically your marketing has to grow with your technology. You enable tons of things with your technology, but your marketing has to evolve as well, that same path. And uh, that's something we learned. It was a tough learning over time because, as I said, I mean, we as well had a lot of failures in that one. But that is something, and that is a challenge because you were talking about challenges. Yeah. That is what the challenge is we are living with in, in, uh, in a bigger marketing scope in this company to really get people yeah, and uh, get, a, get an emotional connection to a pretty cold technology. Mm. Uh, and that's what we're trying to, to fix here. Hans, yeah? thank you so much. That was really quite interesting. Not only quite interesting, <laughs> that was actually pretty amazing to feel. I knew that they were brewing something in their labs, right? In terms <laughs> of trying to tell us, okay, what are, going, what are the future products <laughs> going to look like, right? And of course, I mean, working towards um, a new category and new devices and for new markets, that takes time. And as you can tell, right, it's a quite complex topic. Um, we're going to have a little bit of a lunch break, but we should have enough content for you guys to, to just enjoy and watch um, some coverage here from the show floor on EVA. If you're still around Berlin or close by, you can still come over to EVA until, I think, Wednesday next week. Uh, we are here in Hall 16. So just come over, say hello. By the way, for those gamers out there, there's an amazing gaming rig down here. Um, what's what's the name of these guys? VRX. I mm. tried the I tried the high end version of, of, of their rig uh, at IDF. That was like eighty eighty four thousand US dollars. This is still like thirty thousand that they have over here, and it's lots of fun. They have iRacing racing running, and um, yeah, you just want to try it out. So I should be back on the stream at around one p.m. local time. So that's GMT uh, plus one. And we're going to talk to uh, Jason Gurdon. 
He's a senior manager of communications for Alcatel, and I'm pretty sure that he also has some products with him, so I see you soon.